Good morning. Here's a look at your pollen report for this final day in the month of June, where we have a low count this morning for plantain. We have a low count for pine fir and spruce, a moderate count for true grasses, giving you a total pollen level on this day of moderate. We're at Trinity Bellwoods Park this morning. We hope you're breathing easier, and thanks to Reactant for that pollen report. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for this time of year on where we should be, seasonal numbers. So, of course, our sunrise, and it was a beautiful one this morning at 5.39. It'll be a pretty nice sunset at 9.03. Uh, the seasonal high, 25.7. We're going to be above that. The low right around 13.8, and we'll be above that through the overnight period. We won't break a record. That previous record, 35 degrees, set back in 1964. Temperatures right now, you're waking up to about 21. Current Humidex sits at about 26. Lots of sunshine through the morning. Partly cloudy late afternoon, a high of 29, and Humidex of 34. Now, look at this. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Temperatures 30 plus. Humidex values will build. The next real chance of some showers Friday, and it's only a slight chance. That means I want you to water the lawns and gardens and as well as the containers for today. Once again, your daytime high today, 29, with lots of sunshine. Enjoy the summer heat in Toronto. Now it's over to you, Steph with the summer traffic. Oh yeah, enjoy the summer heat, Frankie. I was just saying, I'm gonna hang out in my car because that's where the AC is working for me right now. But we're just looking at Young Dundas Square. It is looking good. It's actually not looking too busy here. Most of our major routes are, are pretty much in the same shape. It's not too bad, but we are looking at delays, uh, but no problems to report right now. So taking a look out at our major routes this morning, we had an earlier issue on the southbound 427 ramp to the westbound QEW. You can see that camera has a move to its original position. So we are no longer looking at that problem. And the westbound QEW is moving very well. So that's to the uh, right of your screen there. Outside of that, we are looking at some volume delays over on the eastbound 401. It's busy from Mississauga Road over to Mavis. Also busy from the 427 to about Weston in the Express and Collector Lane. So it is a slow go right now, but it typically is through this area. Uh, taking a look at the uh, flip side, westbound 401, not too bad up until you get to this point right here. So you see the top of your screen there where things aren't really moving too fast. Yeah, westbound QEW ramp to the 410, 403, down to a single lane because of construction. As a result, we're looking at uh, these typical volume delays as well. Bank securely from anywhere, anytime with CIBC, whether it's paying bills, depositing checks, or transferring money in Canada and around the world. With CIBC, you can do it all 24-7. That's a look at what we have going on for your drive. It's a little bit on the busy side, but not bad. I'll send things over to Mal with a look at your news. Thank you, Stefan. It has been busy in our newsroom here. Brampton Mayor Patrick Brown's office confirming to BT this morning that as of July the 6th, masks will be mandatory in indoor public spaces in Peel region. Brown and Mississauga Mayor Bonnie Crombie, they are expected to make that official announcement at 9 o'clock this morning. This after the province said that mandatory masks were unnecessary but would leave the final decision up to the municipalities. Other regions in the GTHA are expected to follow suit. Now, Brampton Mayor Patrick Brown will be joining us live at 8 o'clock this morning with more on the announcement as well as what discussions with the province have been like. Meanwhile, Mayor John Tory, who joined us here just moments ago, along with Toronto's Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Eileen Devilla, will have an announcement later on this morning, also at 9 o'clock, actually the exact same time that Peel Region will be having theirs. And he spoke to me a few minutes ago here. He said there is likely not going to be any surprises. Have a listen. I think you would expect that we will be announcing this morning. We'll be acting in a manner consistent with other people in the region. Um, and I know that some of this may represent a hassle for some people or get them out of their comfort zone. Uh, but in the end, I think what we're going to be uh, putting forward to the City Council for its consideration today, based on, as always, the advice of the Medical Officer of Health, is in the best interest of avoiding what we're seeing going on elsewhere and keeping us on the right path uh, to a solid, uh, healthy recovery uh, for the city uh, and for the region. Of course, we're going to follow that official announcement at 9 o'clock. But again, July 6th for Peel Region. We will see what happens with Toronto. Plans for mandatory mask wearing is already in place for the TTC. Effective July the 2nd, masks or face coverings will be mandatory, with the exception of children under 2 years old or people with a medical condition, as well as those who cannot put on a mask without help, as well in other regions on their transit as well. Well, a violent tow truck turf war has prompted the province to announce a task force to reform the industry. They are operating in an industry that lacks oversight, structure, and where too many criminals are making their own rules. 
This change comes as several incidents of violence, including murder, have been linked to tow truck operations in the GTA. York police in announcing the dismantling of alleged organized crime rings connected to the industry. And just last week, Toronto police laying charges against 11 people, including an officer accused of fraud over $5,000 and breach of trust. Toronto police are releasing photos of a man wanted in connection to eight knife point robberies in the city's east end. Have a close look. Investigators believe the man went to several spas or massage parlors between February and March, posing as a client before he forced victims into a chokehold and then held a knife to them, demanding money or personal items. This man is described as 25 to 30 years old, about five foot five, a thin build and black hair. Luckily, no one was seriously injured in any of these incidents.